In this tutorial, I'm going to go over the information contained in Section 6 of the Pilot's Operating Handbook for the Cessna 172S aircraft. In this section, we'll cover weight and balance and the equipment list. And as always, we start off with the table of contents. Next, we have the introduction, which says, this section describes the procedures for establishing the basic empty weight and moment of the airplane. Sample forms are provided for reference. Procedures for calculating the weight and moment for various operations are also provided. For additional information, regard the weight and balance procedures. Refer to the Aircraft Weight and Balance Handbook, and they give you the FAA code for the document here. A comprehensive list of Cessna equipment available for this airplane is included at the back of this section. Specific information regarding the weight, arm, moment, and installed equipment for this airplane as delivered from the factory can be found in the plastic envelope in the back of this POH. You should find this plastic envelope for your airplane at the back that comes with the handbook from the factory and this will be airplane specific because each airplane might have different options installed at the time of purchase. And it says warning, it is the responsibility of the pilot to make sure the airplane is loaded properly. Operation outside the prescribed weight and balance limitations could result in an accident and serious or fatal injury. And remember, as we load the airplane and have an aft CG location, we tend to lose stability of the airplane in the pitch axis and if you get into a spin and the CG is too far aft it may potentially become impossible to get out of the spin. Next we have information on airplane weighing procedures and those are itemized over here and essentially all they do is put a bathroom scale really um, underneath each of the three tires and they measure what each scale reads. Then they use the geometry of the wheelbase and they can deduce or calculate what the total weight is. That's just the sum of the values from all three scales. And using the wheelbase numbers the location aft of the firewall of where the center of gravity is. This is essentially the same thing you do with a model airplane, but you use your fingers. What you, and what you do is you suspend the airplane from each wingtip using uh, each of your hands, and usually you use two people. So each person is holding the airplane by its wingtip with one or two fingers, and you move your finger uh, back and forth along the cord until you find the point where the nose of the airplane will not go up or down and once you find that point that is where the center of gravity is located along the cord of the wing. Now you obviously can't do that with a full-scale airplane it's going to be far too large and far too heavy but essentially this is all you're really doing. Here we see uh, forms for the calculations to do this on the full-scale aircraft. And here we have information on the weight and balance and a sample problem that they give to you. Um, I will do a sample problem in greater detail um, on a tutorial for a cross-country flight that I will uh, do and in that I will go step by step and show you exactly how to utilize these weight and balance charts and have actual numbers and go through a working example. Here we can see a loading graph. Um, all this really is is the weight of a particular item. It could be a person, it could be fuel, it could be baggage, and it's that weight multiplied by the station arm. So the station arm is just the distance from the firewall 
to the item of interest in inches. So to find the moment, all that is is a torque. It's a force with a lever arm. So it's a force times a distance. So the force is just the weight. For a pilot, it would be, let's say, 180 pounds. And his pilot's seat is going to be 37 inches aft of the firewall so that the moment or torque is just 180 pounds times 37 inches and that's the value you get so if we think of a line we're basically at a fixed point in the airplane so pilot and front passenger well they're always going to be the same distance away from the fuselage and the same thing is true for the rear passengers they're going to be a little bit further away from the fuselage but their distance is not going to change because their seats are bolted to the floor. So you're multiplying the weight times the distance. The distance doesn't change. The only thing that changes is the weight, and that's why you get these straight lines. And what you can do is determine what the weight of the person or pilot or baggage or fuel is. Find it on the the respective curve, work your way down to the x-axis, and that tells you what the load moment is per thousand. Alternatively, if you know the pilot is 37 inches away from the fuselage, or from the firewall, all you have to do is multiply 37 inches by the weight of the pilot, and you're going to get the exact same thing over here. And of course you'll have to divide it by a thousand, but you will get exactly this straight line. That's all this line is. It's very, very straightforward. And so here we can see the stations for various um, locations on the airplane. Here's the same exact information, just a little bit more detailed, kind of uh, a section cut looking down into the fuselage, cabin of the uh, fuselage and also along the side of the fuselage. Here we can see another very important graph, which is the center of gravity moment envelope. So once we go through our weight and balance calculations, we're going to get the total moment, we're going to get the total weight, and we go along this point, find the corresponding weight on the y-axis, and we see where does that fall within this envelope. And we could be in the normal or utility category. If we move too far forward, we become forward CG. If we go too far back, we become aft CG and unstable or unsafe. Here we can see the same thing. The only difference now is that the x-axis is the actual inches aft of the datum or the firewall for the case of the Cessna. Before we had the moment over a thousand. Same information just being graphed in a different way. Here we have a comprehensive equipment list, and so let's read what it says. Figure 6-9 is a comprehensive list of all Cessna equipment, which is available for model 172S airplane equipped with a Garmin G1000 integrated cockpit system and a GFC 700 autopilot. This comprehensive equipment list provides the following information in column form. So in the item number column, each item is assigned a coded number. The first two digits of the code represent the identification of the item within the Air Transport Association Specification 100. So next we have these assignments also correspond to the maintenance manual chapter for the airplane. After the first two digits, items receive a unique sequence number. After the sequence number, a suffix letter is assigned to, the, to identify equipment as a required item, a standard item, or an optional item. And here we see the suffixes are R for required, S for standard, O for op optional equipment, and A for optional equipment, which are in addition to the required or standard equipment. So this is important because when you look at the FARs, there's a minimum equipment list that you need for daytime and nighttime VFR and IFR. However, there's a little note in that list that says if there's anything above and beyond this list that's required it will be specified by the manufacturer 
And here is exactly that list where you find what precisely you must have be working operational equipment in the airplane to legally fly. So here we can see that list. And we've got the item number here with the S for standard, R for required, and O for optional. Here we can see the reference drawing, the description, we've got the weight of the item, and the arm. And so basically this is every nut and bolt of the airplane is tabulated here. And they use this to calculate the weight and balance from the factory. One thing that came up during my check ride exam by the examiner was concerning the stall warning horn. And he asked me, do I need to have the stall warning horn operating in the aircraft to fly legally? And if you just go by what's given in the Federal Aviation Regulations, you would immediately say, well, it's not in there, so I don't need it for VFR flight. However, if we look over here to the equipment list, if we find the stall warning horn, which is given right there, we see that the stall pneumatic stall warning system is 31-02-R. So it is absolutely required that the stall warning horn system is operational for you to legally fly. And of course you check that in the pre-flight by um, sucking on the opening of the stall warning horn port on the wingtip to make sure that you can hear it going off. So that's all there really is to uh, section six. It's really that simple. There's a lot of important information, so make sure you take the time to go through it methodically.